So last night was the first round of the NFL draft. The night went pretty well. It started at 8 o'clock and it ended at 12 o'clock. 32 teams picked. Three teams had two first rounders. And I would say a lot of teams came out with pretty good players. This draft uh, was a, a, de a deep class, had a lot of good talent. So I will be grading each player in the first round. With the first overall pick, the Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence. This is an A-plus pick. He's probably generational talent. He has the highest floor out of any player in this draft. You know, there's a lot of like about him. He's got a great arm. He has a high ceiling. He's got good mobility. He sees the field well. He's got incredible accuracy. It's an A-plus pick. With the second pick, the New York Jets choose Zach Wilson. This is also an A-plus pick. Zach Wilson has an incredible arm. He has great mobility out of the pocket. You know, he makes incredible, he makes a wow throws, throws off his back foot, throws off his side. He's got those Mahomes-like, you know, arm angles. Maybe he's not Mahomes-like, quote-unquote, but his arm really is. And I know a lot of the downfalls of him were his schedule and that he played at BYU. The competition isn't going to be as hard as like Mac Jones's competition, as Justin Fields' competition, but that's not really what you would look for in a quarterback. In a quarterback, you want to see how they see the field. You want to see their accuracy. You want to see their decision making. And overall, Zach Wilson is an A-plus player. And with the New York Jets needing a quarterback, needing a franchise guy, he is, in my opinion, built for New York. He's got the moxie in the pocket. You know, He's handsome. People like him. Good pick. A-plus pick. The 49ers go Trey Lance, number three, and I have this at an A minus only because Justin Fields probably is a better prospect coming out. He has a higher floor than Trey Lance now, but potential wise, Trey Lance has a higher ceiling. Now, Trey Lance is an FCS player. He played at North Dakota State, and if you want to use the competition narrative for uh, Zach Wilson, you have to use the same for Trey Lance. He, like the comp If you think competition at BYU was not that strong, he played against FCS players. But at the same time, he is a really, really good player. He's got great accuracy. He had zero interceptions in his championship year and threw 28 touchdowns. So I think he has a lot of potential. And I'm really glad that the 49ers picked him over Mac Jones because Mac Jones really isn't as good or has a higher ceiling than Trey Lance. The Falcons choose Kyle Pitts, likely one of the safest players in this draft. He's the best tight end prospect I've ever seen. He he feel like his the way he plays is like Darren Waller. And Darren Waller's like position he plays positional as tight end. He's fast. Cornerbacks are he's bigger than cornerbacks. He's faster than linebackers. And he's stronger than safeties. Like Kyle Pitts is really Darren Waller, and that's been my pro comp since I saw him in like week four of the of Gators football. So, I think this is a really good pick by the Falcons to add another offensive piece to their already loaded offense. And this is an A plus pick. With the fifth overall pick, the Bengals chose Jamar Chase. And let me start this off by saying I think that Jamar Chase as a is a really good number one receiver. He is a classic X receiver. I think he has a really bright future in the NFL, but the thing is, I have a problem with the Bengals picking him. I've said this in the Panay Sewell um, video that I did. I think that the Bengals have to go offensive line. Joe Burrow tore his ACL. He tore a bunch of other things in his knee. He got his knee obliterated, and he also got pressured a bunch in Cincinnati. So, if you really wanted to help Joe Burrow and help your quarterback, you'd pick offensive linemen. But, you know, they're like, hey, let's go receiver. So, I would bring this grade up higher if they address offensive linemen in the second round, the third round, the fourth round. I'd bring this up higher, but right now it's only a B plus because they didn't address their major, major, major need. And receiver for them wasn't a massive need. So, it's only a B plus. I would bring this up higher if they go offensive line in later rounds. The Dolphins with the sixth pick go with Jalen Waddell. And 
I'm bringing this to an A plus for multiple reasons. First of all, because the Dolphins got an extra first rounder, so they have a first rounder next year as well. No, no, I think in 2023 they have an extra first rounder. They have an extra first rounder. But Jalen Waddle is a really, really, really fast, good, sure hands receiver. And at Alabama, he was dominant. He was the original number one receiver before Devontae Smith. And if he didn't get injured, Devontae Smith doesn't win the Heisman. And Jalen Waddle can play on the outside. He has the speed to play on the outside. He, right now, I think is going to be in the slot. And he's going to be deadly out of that. Tua just got another weapon. The Lions go with Panay Sewell. I have this at a A- minus pick. And I have this at A- minus because... Panay Sewell is going to play right tackle. And guess, I wouldn't say who said this, but if the Jazz picked him, which was a narrative, he was going to play right tackle, and he pl- is uh, he's going to play right tackle at Detroit. Now, you're going to invest the seventh overall pick in a right tackle. He might be really good, but a right tackle is a right tackle. It's not as valuable as left tackle. I can see him moving to left tackle, potentially. But it was a good pick. He has a lot of potential. And you're getting another offensive line for the goofball. But it is only an A-. minus. The Carolina Panthers with the 8th pick go with J.C. Horn. Now, J.C. Horn is a incredible press man corner. And he's he really has CB1 potential. And I, really, I like this pick for the Carolina Panthers. They need a cornerback. And in my opinion, I thought that cornerback was actually going to go later. In the draft, so this this pick kind of flipped my mock draft a little bit. But I thought that the Panthers, if they didn't get Rashawn Slater, should have gotten J.C. Horn. But they picked J.C. Horn anyways in front of Rashawn Slater, who's coming up later. It's overall an A pick. He really he really plays like Jalen Ramsey, like a really a good CB1 press man corner. So I have no problems with this pick. The Broncos with the ninth overall pick go with Patrick Sertain and Patrick Sertain fits the system he's a really good player he was my CB1 but at the same time the Broncos have so many cornerbacks on the roster they signed Ronald Darby three-year deal Michael Ojemudie they picked up last year um have another cornerback they they signed two, uh, two cornerbacks Ronald Darby and someone else I think I forgot but overall it's a good player not a need. They could have picked Justin Fields. They didn't. They went with cornerback. And you're going to have to move one of those corners to safety. And you have Justin Simmons. So can't put him at free safety. So you're going to move him to strong safety? I don't know. They really didn't pick for a need. But it's a good player. That's why I'm giving it a B plus. The Eagles traded up from the 12th overall pick to the 10th overall pick in the division. They traded with the... Dallas Cowboys and they picked Devontae Smith and now I love Devontae Smith so much he was such an amazing receiver at Alabama won the Heisman like broke SEC records the receiving record and I'm pretty sure the touchdown record but Devontae Smith is a really really good player and the Eagles I think he probably would have fell the 12 even if they didn't want to trade up and the only concern that I have is that it's the Eagles. The Eagles can't develop receivers, and they always pick a receiver that is too high. Like last year, they picked Jalen Rieger instead of Justin Jefferson. But I think that Devontae Smith is still a great player nevertheless, and he's probably going to have a lot of potential to be a number one receiver. I know that his weight is a concern, but I still really like him, and his route running is insane, bar none. He's got good speed, and like players like J.C. Horn, who went two, two um, spots ahead of him, even though he's a press man corner, and he's probably one of the best press man corners in the last like f- uh, three years, he still got, what, what, like 200 yards on him? He got he put up like 100-and-something yards against Derek Stingley, who's a top pick in, the, in next year's draft, probably. I really like this pick, and um, that's why I'm giving it an A. With the 11th overall pick, the Bears traded up from the 20th pick to the 11th pick. They traded with the Giants for an extra first-round pick next year, and they select Justin Fields. And I'm giving this an A. 
Justin Fields, I'm old enough to remember when he was supposed to be the number two overall pick before all these BS character concerns, how, like, his Ohio State stigma, he's got no control over that stigma, he's got no control that he played in a college offense that was built around him, and that he was a first read and go player. I still think he has really, really good potential to be uh, to be a top 15 quarterback in the NFL. And I also love that the Bears traded up in front of the Patriots. The Patriots were really, in my opinion, they, they should have picked Justin Fields. They should have traded up already, but they didn't. And I'm so thankful that they did because they, they saved the AFC East for the next 10 years. With the addition of Justin Fields, the quarterback room just got a lot scarier because you have Andy Dalton, you have um, Nick Foles too, you got now Justin Fields, they're going to have to fight for the the job, and who knows, maybe Allen Robinson wants to come back if he wants to play with Justin Fields, and they got Darnold Mooney there, they got, I don't know what's going on with uh, their other receiver, but they could probably draft one in the second round, so personally I like this pick. I know they gave up another first rounder but I'd give up a first rounder for Justin Fields if he kept on falling my second problem in the 2020 NFL draft was when the Dallas Cowboys traded back with the Eagles for the 12th overall pick and they selected Micah Parsons now I'm giving Micah Parsons a B rating just because Micah Parsons at Penn State didn't do any zone coverage he did zero zone coverage he was more a strong side linebacker And I think he's going to play that in a 4-3 defense in Dallas. Now, he really is just an athletic, big athletic fast. Sideline to sideline speed. He can hold up in man coverage. He likely will be the one that is guarding tight ends, guarding running backs. He'll most likely focus on the run. He also probably try to rush the passer. And he really isn't that great as a pass rusher. Uh, in run, I think he's a good in run defense, but he's big, athletic, fast. He's got big boomer, boomer bust potential, and I don't love it to the Cowboys just because they have Leighton Vanderish and they have Jalen Smith, and I think those three are really, really, really similar type of linebackers. Can't if Leighton Vanderish goes down, you can't play either of them at the mic. So it's just a weird pick. I'm giving this a B. My last, I'm pretty sure, A plus pick. It's Rashawn Slater. Rashawn Slater is my well, he was my favorite tackle coming out. All you needed to do was look at film from the Ohio State Northwestern game last year when he went up when he went up against Chase Young. He absolutely neutralized him. This was this is an A plus pick, A plus pick, A plus pick. Dallas Cowboys didn't choose to get him. They got Micah Parsons, a linebacker, a strong side linebacker, and. Oh, Justin Herbert just got a really, really, really good left tackle. I love this pick a lot. The New York Jets traded up from 23 to 14 with the Minnesota Vikings. They traded two third-round picks and their 23rd pick for Elijah Vera Tucker. Now, this is an A pick. I won't give it an A-plus pick just because they traded some assets, but it's still a really, really good pick. You drafted your franchise quarterback, second overall. You need to protect him. And I didn't think Elijah Vera Tucker was going to fall this far. I think the earliest he was going to go was the, with the Vikings because they need interior offensive linemen badly. And I love this pick. He's probably the most day one ready guard. He's probably a bookend. He's a blue chip. I really like this pick for the Jets. They chose to protect their guy. The New England Patriots with the 15th overall pick go with Zach Wilson, and I'm giving this a B because he won't be a day one starter, and I just well I'm just not that high on Mac Jones. I uh, he had he has incredible accuracy, but he also played with the best players in college football. Like um I'm pretty sure six other of his teammates went in the first round, and he had two top ten receivers go. He had the Heisman winner as well. He had a good offensive line. He had great coaching. But at the same time, you can't really teach 77 completion percentage. So this is really just a Tom Brady build type of player. You know, kind of an underdog. Didn't start until this year. Led his team to the national championship with a lot of help, though. 
And I think that Mac Jones is still a first-round talent, but he's borderline a first-round talent. And the Patriots are probably the best place he could go. With the 16th overall pick, the Arizona Cardinals go with Zavin Collins. And Zavin Collins was an All-American out of Tulsa, but he played in a 3-3-5 defense, which you're never going to see in the NFL, and he's going to need his brain to be rewired for NFL defenses. And I also don't know where he's going to play on the Cardinals. Is he going to play Mike? Is he going to play Edge? Is he going to be a Hassan Reddick replacement? I think he's going to play where Hassan Reddick played, just not as much as an edge rusher role, rushing the passer as much. I think he's going to play it more zone coverage, but he's not a Mike, but it's still a good pick. I still like this pick. He's good in zone coverage, he's good at stopping the run, and he's good at pass rushing, so I like this pick. The Raiders will be the Raiders. They reached for Alex Leatherwood so bad. This is a C- minus pick, and that's that's being generous. And I'm only being a little bit generous because Alex Leatherwood was a good player at Alabama. But where is he going to play on this offensive line? They have Colton Miller at left tackle. Alex Leatherwood most likely profiles as a guard in the NFL. So is he going to play guard? Or or do you want to play him at right tackle? And if you're going to play him at right tackle, what do you not like about Tevin Jenkins? Tevin Jenkins didn't even go in the first round this er, last night. It's just a C-minus pick. It's just the Raiders will do Raider things. They're going to convince themselves that this guy is going to go before them or gonna, he's the, he's going to go now. I don't know what they were thinking with this pick. I don't, I don't think any mock draft had him in the top 20. The Dolphins with the 18th overall pick go with Jalene Phillips. And I think that Jalene Phillips is edge rusher one, defensive end one, which, whatever you like to say. And he has a ton, a ton, a ton of potential, but he's got a lot of medical red flags. He had to medically retire because he got he had three concussions at UCLA. At Miami, he was probably the best pass rusher in the ACC. And potential-wise, this is an A-plus pick. Medical red shirts have to knock it down two pegs. I still really like this pick, and that's why I'm giving it an A-. minus. With the 19th overall pick, the Washington football team selects Jameen Davis. And I like Jameen Davis out of Kentucky. He's good in zone coverage. He's solid in the run game. He's a Mike linebacker. But what did they not like about Jeremiah owusu koromoa who also didn't go last night? Jeremiah owusu koromoa would have fit their system perfectly. Probably would have played either the will or the overhang role. Probably would have been a box safety. But I still like Jimmy Davis, probably one of the best zone coverage corners in the class. It's still a good pick in my opinion. The Giants traded back from 11 to 20 where they select Kadarius Toney. Now, I'm giving Kadarius Toney a B here because they already have Kadarius Toney's kind of role in Darius Slayton. You know, Darius Slayton is in the open, uh, like a slot receiver catches in the open field, finds the end zone. And Kadarius Tony is a speed guy, most likely in the slot. He's probably going to do a little bit more on the outside with the Giants. I don't hate this pick, but they needed edge rusher so badly. They really don't have edge rusher. They could have went linebacker as well. It just didn't fit an immediate need. But at the same time, it's a make-it-breaker year for Daniel Jones. I understand why they probably liked Kadarius Tony a lot. He's got a lot of potential. As a slot receiver, maybe not as an outside guy, but it's an overall it's a eh, pick. I would have loved an edge rusher here for the Giants, but they went with their guy. With the 21st overall pick, the Indianapolis Colts select Quiddy Pay. Quiddy Pay is a solid pass rusher. He is also a solid run defender, but I think they should have went offensive lineman right here. Going with offensive linemen would have solved their tackle problem. Anthony Costanza was hired. And I just felt like offensive linemen was a bigger need. But I still like it because they did need another edge rusher spot. So it's an overall, it's, a, it's, a, it's an okay pick. With the 21st overall pick, the Tennessee Titans go with Caleb Farley. Now, Caleb Farley, without injury concerns, is probably the best cornerback or the second best cornerback in this class. 
He switched to the position from wide receiver to cornerback at V Tech, and I really like him. He's really good in zone coverage. He fits the scheme, and if he stays healthy, they really got a steal in this draft class. Maybe offensive lineman was the other position of need, probably right tackle. If they te- went with Tevin Jenkins, Derrick Henry would have another toy to play with. But we see how that went last year when they went with the biggest bust in last year's class, Isaiah Wilson. But overall, good pick. Caleb Farley's an A-. minus. At 23, the Minnesota Vikings traded back with the New York Jets, and they got an extra two third-rounders. They picked Christian Derrissaw, and Christian Derrissaw at 23 really is a steal. He was a top 20 pick, in my opinion, from this year, and the Raiders could have picked him, and they, Christian Derrissaw was probably the pick, other than Elijah Vera Tucker at 14, and they managed to steal him all the way at 23. Christian uh, Christian Derrissaw is a really, really big boy off the lineman. He's like a Mackay Becton, but just not as heavy, not as large. He has a little bit of issues with his feet mobility, but still, he that didn't really cause many problems at VTech. He's a really solid off the lineman, and this is an A pick, in my opinion, for the value that they got at 23 and the player. So here's where a lot of my problems start. With the 24th overall pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers go with Najee Harris. Now, I know that running back was a big need for the Steelers, and I love Najee Harris so much out of Alabama. He can literally do everything. He can hurdle people. He can catch out of the backfield. He's like a Derrick Henry type of player. But at the same time, you're going to pick Najee Harris type player in the first round. I know he's a really good player. He can do it all, but running backs really shouldn't go this high especially anymore and even though running backs have been getting more and more and more versatile they just aren't premier players to pick from and I think that they could have gotten another really good running back maybe Michael Carter maybe Kenneth Gainwell in later rounds and 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 uh picked an offensive lineman because who's gonna block for Najee Harris who's gonna block for Big Ben if you want to keep him there so they could have went Landon Dickerson, they could have went Tevin Jenkins, they could have addressed an offensive lineman or left tackle, but they chose running back. So I'm not a huge fan of this pick. I'm a huge fan of Najee Harris, just not of the pick. I give it a C plus. The Jaguars go with Travis Etienne, and this is an even worse situation because Travis because James Robinson was probably the best rookie running back last year, and he ran behind a subpar offensive line as a power back. And he gained over a thousand yards, and I guess Urban Meyer just got a hard on for Clemson. You know, he just wanted to reunite Trevor Lawrence with Travis Etienne. Now Travis Etienne does things that James Robinson can't really do. He has elusiveness out of the backfield. He has home run hitting potential out of the backfield. He's probably better out of the backfield catching wise, but you already had a really good running back on your roster so you're gonna have to run two running back sets a lot and you're gonna have to switch them out a lot so it really wasn't a need safety was a need Christian Barmore could have been in play uh potentially offensive of linemen again to pre- to protect your quarterback but they went with running back C plus with the 26 overall pick the Cleveland Browns go with Greg Newsom now I really wanted Greg Newsom to fall farther so that the Jets could pick him up. They could trade up from 34, but Joe Douglas already went into the Jets 360 podcast or whatever, so I knew his his day was done. So the Cleveland Browns get an absolute stud. They got Troy Hill, probably going to play in the slot. They have Greedy Williams, don't know where he's going to play. They have Denzel Ward, it's probably going to be CB1, and Greg Newsom can immediately fit that CB2 role. He played on an island, at Northwestern, I wanted the Jets to pick him, but needless to say, he's great in man coverage, he's good in zone coverage, he fits the scheme, and that Cleveland defense just got a whole lot scarier with another legit CB1. The Ravens, with the 27th overall pick, go with Rashad Bateman, and I like that the Ravens went receiver. They really needed a separator for Lamar Jackson. Rashad Bateman played a lot bigger than he actually was. He's around six foot, hundred and ninety something pounds. And 
he has good versatility. He could play in the slot. He could be your receiver one next to Hollywood Brown or something. I think this is a solid pick. I don't have problems with this. It's just you hope that Rashawn Bateman can have good separation in the NFL. Now, with the 28th overall pick, the New Orleans Saints go with Peyton Turner. And you could sell me on him as a C-plus pick. You could sell me on a B or a B-minus overall pick. This was the second wow pick of the day. Alex Leatherwood was the, num- was the first wow pick. And Peyton Turner is, he was definitely underrated out of Houston. He's good rushing the pass rusher. He's a traditional defensive end in a 4-3 system. I think he fits the system well. That's why you can sell me at a B. But he was definitely going to be there in the second round. He was probably he might have been there in the third round as well. I think this was just a reach for a player that fits well and that can play really well. He's a Trey Hendrickson replacement. Overall, this is an eh pick. You could have waited a little bit longer for him. You could have picked his cornerback. But you could sell me on him being a C pick. You could sell me on him being a B pick. The Packers at 29 go with Eric Stokes. Now, Eric Stokes is a freak athlete. He ran an unofficial 4-2-5 on a YouTube video. He ran at his pro day an unofficial 4-2-8. He has great athleticism. And he fits the system well, actually. He is probably going to do a lot of man coverage, just like Jair Alexander does. And he doesn't have to have the responsibilities that that, uh, Jair Alexander will have to have. I think overall, this is a good pick. It's a B-plus pick. You solved a need at cornerback. But at the same time, before the draft started, Aaron Rodgers told people in the organization that he wants out. So are you going to draft receiver? Elijah Moore is still on the board. He didn't go last night. Or are you going to go defense? They picked defense. Like, they've picked defense every single year. They haven't picked offensive linemen. Other, or they haven't picked an offensive linemen. They haven't picked a receiver. They went quarterback last year. So, they're really not helping Aaron Rodgers. They're helping their team, basically. They're just going on needs and wants more than what will satisfy our MVP. But I still like Eric Sosa. I think this is a B-plus pick. Now, with the... 30th overall pick the Buffalo Bills go with Gregory Rousseau Gregory I don't love Gregory Rousseau all that much a lot of his sacks came up on cleanup sacks he really doesn't have a go-to move he's more like an interior pass the more pressure he gets is the closer he is to the nose tackle and that's because the ACC doesn't have a lot of good interior off in the linemen and different and uh, centers but Rousseau is just a big guy. He's just big and strong. He's not super fast. He tested poorly at his pro day. He gained a lot of weight. Maybe he's been practicing a lot of the offseason. Maybe he's been getting better. But for the Buffalo Bills at 30 to pick Gregory Rousseau, who I thought is a second-round pick at best, is definitely a reach. He received a lot of hype early on. But it's just I just don't love this pick. I don't like this pick a lot. Gregory Rousseau, in my opinion, probably has the biggest boom or bust. He's either going to be a great edge rusher in the NFL, or he's either going to be a massive bust. With the 33rd overall pick, the Baltimore Ravens go with Jason Owe. Now, I'm giving this a B because his production is very poor. He got zero sacks last year at Penn State, but at the same time, he does have a lot of potential to be a quality edge rusher in the league. Um, You can't really say much because he didn't have a lot of ball production, but he still got pressures. And I still think, I think it's a good pick for the Ravens because they lost Matthew Judon. So it's an overall, it's a B pick. With the final pick of the first round, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers go with Joe Tryon. Joe Tryon out of Washington is an interesting player. I didn't do a lot of study on him. I didn't hear a ton of buzz from the NFL draft analysts and and quality analysts that I like to listen to. But at the same time, a lot of NFL people had reports about a lot of buzz with him. And I can't really give this an accurate grade because I didn't do I didn't do a lot of study on him. I'm giving this a B just because 
you're putting another quality edge rusher. I've heard good things about him, but you're putting a quality edge rusher next to Shaq Barrett. You already have good interior passive rushing. You have great linebackers. You have great safeties. You have great cornerbacks. That defense just got a lot scarier. So, overall, I like this pick just because it's an edge rusher pick and that it was one of their needs, their last edge rusher. So, overall, this is a good pick. I'll probably do more research on him since he went in the first round, but the Bucks keep on getting better. So, overall, I think a lot of teams got quality players. They filled needs. Maybe not their most deathly need, but... They got some good players. I think this draft class is pretty deep. And a lot of players that I thought were going to go in the first round are most likely second round picks now. Elijah Moore I thought was going in the first round. Tevin Jenkins, JOK, maybe Trayvon Mowrid, Christian Barmore. It's going to be interesting and can't wait to make more videos about the drafts. See ya.